This channel is for educational purposes only. Please do your own due diligence before making any investment decisions. Hi, this is Joe Rabel with Invest Like a Pro. Now, I know a lot of people have tuned into this. They treat it sort of as a masterclass for uh, trend and momentum. And I talk a lot about MACD and ADX. Uh, and I do suggest if you're uh, interested in learning more about those indicators, like first what they are, I wouldn't start with my stuff. I would probably go, uh, there's some basic um, videos that have been done by stock charts that uh, could help you at least give you a introduction to uh, those indicators. But today, what I want to do is actually show you how I believe you need to start. If you're getting into technical analysis and you want to learn um, how to trade in multiple time frames, I want you to understand this one concept today. If you can learn this, then you can apply it to basically any kind of indicator. You can add overlay indicators. You can do what I'm suggesting, but it needs to start with price. All right, so we're going to get going. I'm going to show you how I would go about uh, looking for what I think is the best entry in technical analysis. For those of you who'd like to learn more about uh, the, the courses, um, you can go to rablestockresearch.com forward slash services. Um, but one thing I would suggest if you're fairly new to this and, and you haven't gotten the book yet, I am offering at a discount right now. Um, if you go to rablestockresearch.com forward slash book, you can find out more information. Looking at Microsoft, and I have four time frames up with the monthly, uh, weekly, daily, and hourly. I'm only going to look at the weekly, daily, and hourly uh, on this video, but uh, it really does apply to all time frames. And I actually really uh, refined this approach when I was trading in her day. Um, and then started applying it to the bigger time frames and found it was really, really useful. All right. So uh, let's just start with this weekly chart and give you an understanding of where I'm coming from here. So um, if we look at the way this played out off of this correction, it was actually a full fledged um, downtrend here because you made a um, so you made a lower low here. We took out this prior low. Right. And then we made another lower high. Well, we made the first lower high and then we made a lower low. So we basically reverse the trend here, um, I, I would say, using the swings. And that does it's more like uh, presumptive evidence when you use the trend line. But when you go from a new low to a new a new high to a new low and then make a lower high and a lower low, you've you've completed two lower lows. And that based on most uh, people that you'd ask in technical analysis, that would be confirmation of a, a trend change. All right. So so we see that. And then we get another um, kind of a test of this high. It really didn't. It was more like a double top. And then you made a lower low, lower high, another lower low, another lower high, another lower low. Right. And then we take the, we do the reverse. We actually make a higher high and then a higher low. All right. So now we're making a higher low. So when this turns back up to take out this peak. We've we've reversed this trend back to the upside. OK, now that doesn't. So. So, yes, that that would be a possible entry pattern, especially after it takes this out. You could go down to the daily chart and see if you can't find an entry on this pullback here. And uh, I'm not going to go over that one right now because what I want to do is say, you know what, let's just say we've got a stock that's clearly in an uptrend. It's it's very, very strong. And I know I'm not showing any of the momentum characteristics here because I want you to focus on price. And then you can go back and look at the momentum characteristics. But we want to know what the price is doing. And um, if you notice the way this played out, we came down and we... Uh, we made a uh, we made a simple pullback. All right, we we have one um, decline here. Now it's a little. Um, it might not make a whole lot of sense, but this was not a big enough reversal. It would not have been reflected as a uh, swing. All right, so what this should have done, and I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to talk to talk to stock charts about this, but I think this should have switch this when this made a new low we should have one swing going to the downside right here all right but either way it doesn't really matter because what i'm trying to point out is on the higher time frame we know we have an uptrend and we have a simple pullback in place all right now it would be after this low was made 
Um, and what we'd be looking for is the upturn on this time frame. Now, what you're trying to do is identify a pullback in one time frame. And what we'd like to find is a reversal on the lower time frame that tells us when to get back in on this ongoing trend. This is an ongoing trend. We had a powerful move to the upside and then we get a pullback and it turns into a little bit of an ABC here. Uh, but I'm just telling you, it, when you go and you look at th at least the way that I do the swings on the zigzag, this would not be a big enough uh, reversal point. So there's no up move back down. It's basically either one leg here. But once you make a new low, the swing should actually look like this. All right. So we should have one swing to the downside right to here. Now, while that's going on, we've created a lower low here, and then we created another low here. So we reversed the trend on the daily chart. So now what we want to do is do the opposite. We're looking for the reversal back, coming back to the upside. Now, here's the move. We made a lower low, right? And then we came back up and made a higher high. So now we're on alert. We've made a, we went from a lower low to a higher high. That's a bull alert. OK, all this stuff is in my course. I go into a lot of detail um, with the swings and how to how to use this. But then once we make this higher high, we make a higher low. And now when this turns up, all right, it doesn't have to break out. But the moment we've created the two, that's where we've gone down and we've turned back up. Now, anyone who's watched any of my videos, you know, I talk a lot about the one, two, three. Well, the one is crossing above the trend line. The two is when we actually form the low. And I like to use the zigzag for this when, this when it goes from a zig to a zag and it turns up, not when it breaks out, but when it makes the low, we've created a two. All right. Now, I'm, what I'm telling you is this entry here, when it turns to a two is an entry. All right. And it works beautifully when you're in an uptrend with good momentum and on the decline phase, you don't have a lot of momentum to the downside, okay? So you get a move to the upside, and then you get a simple pullback, all right? And as I've stated, I think this is the actual simple pullback. Now, when you have that simple pullback, you then go down to the smaller time frame, and you're looking for the two. Now, what this could be, you could look at this when you're doing trend line analysis. This would be the two. Okay, let me just make sure you get this. We break the trend line, that's one, all right? Now, this is the higher low, so this would be the two as well. So when this came down and turned up, that was actually where this was turning to a two. You see where, so this moved to the upside would have turned this to the off the low, pointing up, and then this pulled back and made a higher low. So what do we have? We have a two. And a two. We have a two on one time frame and a two on the lower time frame. And what I'm telling you is you should be on the lookout for a two of two. If you find the two of two, uh, whenever you can find them, I think they're really powerful. I think they're uh, they're probably from a risk reward standpoint, um, they tend to be some of the best entries um, that you can find. Now, in a lot of cases, what will happen is. The two on one time frame will be pulling back to the 18. All right. Just like it was here, you'd be getting your first pullback on the higher time frame and then to the 18, and then the first pullback on the uh, lower time frame to the 18, and you'd have a two and a two. All right. In this case, it was a, it was a little awkward because it did the ABC, but you had this really strongly rising 40 underneath and you had a flat 18. So it still qualifies, especially when you strip everything down, forget about the moving averages, and you just look at strong move to the upside and I get a pullback, simple pullback. Now, keep in mind, even if this did form an ABC, that is not a reversal in trend. That is all that is, is an ABC to the downside. That could just be a corrective wave and not necessarily a, rever a reversal back down, especially if you haven't broken a trend line or anything like that. Now, I want you to stay focused on the swings, though. If we look at this and we realize we have a pullback on one time frame and then we've reversed and made the two on this time frame, we've got the two of two. All right. Now, let's just go move forward and let's just look at what took place on the daily chart. So the daily makes this powerful move to the upside and consolidates. 
Notice how we didn't make a new high or a new low. We had inside swings. This is an inside swing. So this swing is in. So this swing right here is inside of this swing. And then we made another inside swing where this swing is inside of this swing. Do you see what I'm saying? These are really, when you get inside swings, this is very powerful. It's telling you to be on the lookout and be ready. Now, if we had MACD up here, and I purposely didn't want to do that to put that up because I want you focused on price because I want you to see the inside swings. And then if you see an inside swing, you're also going to see a reverse divergence because MACD is making a lower low. I can tell you just based on the way this is played out, there's a very high probability that's the what that's what happened. And we'll also notice that the moving average lines have come together. So we've got this situation where we've got inside swings developed and we haven't made a new low. We made this strong move to the upside. What is the bias on the daily chart? The bias is to the upside. So what are we looking for on the hourly chart? We're looking for an entry on the long side. So if we go to that, and just so you're aware, and before I, uh, let me just switch this back. I want to make sure you know. So where this is, this little last pullback is right here, right? Taking out that area right there as it consolidates. And where you create that, um, the moving average is converging and you create your second inside swing. All right. So let's look at this. So look at the way this played out. We made a lower low here. You can draw in your trend line. And again, we get our two. So we don't have a two on the daily time frame. It's not really a two. It's a continuation signal. But if you notice, you're getting an entry on this after um, it moved to the downside and try. And, and so here's where this becomes really powerful. If you know the moving average signals, this was a signal to the downside and we know that we went in the zone and came out but we didn't go to a new low or didn't have any follow through at a new low so what does that mean we need to be on alert as this is turning back to the upside because it's a failed sell signal again these these are right out of my book and my course you want to know how that plays out but what i what i can tell you for a fact is that when we come back up through this low this this prior high here we have confirmed the failure, all right? We had a um, new low. We made a, a move to the upside. We came down and we're testing this area and we haven't really failed. The moment we turn back up through this high, you can really use this peak here. But once you get through those, you then have the potential for a reversal coming back up. And again, I think be on the lookout for that two to develop. And that gives you a lot of confirmation that you're getting back in before the next leg to the upside. So, um, so I wanted to make sure I covered this and go into a little bit of detail and make sure that you guys spend a lot of time looking at price. I would prefer you, I, I call the zigzag training wheels for um, trend. And I, I think this will really help you. I mean, I was using a lot of uh, zigzags when I was interday trading because it provides a lot of clarity, especially when there's more noise. The more noise there is, the more the zigzags will help. All right. So um, start to use this to your advantage. And I think you'll find um, a lot of clarity when it comes to trading in multiple time frames. Once you add in the momentum characteristics after you've learned this, I think it'll take your trading to another level.